What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny Frill, whatever you want to call it. Today was not a day I expected to do a Call Game episode. I woke up, there was eight inches of snow here in Chicago. I was like, today is just going to be a day of shoveling, no basketball. And then the game started, and I had to put down the shovel and get to watching these games. Every single one of these games had their own moments that made it a great day. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. We're going to talk about it. Um, what, what are the odds, y'all? Yesterday we talked about the Bulls. You know, having a, what, five-point lead with six seconds to go and losing the game. Would the same thing happen in back-to-back days? Luckily, they my Bulls, but instead, the Brooklyn Nets. Joe Harris turns the ball over and ends with a Russell Westbrook three. This is an episode we got to give a lot of love to Russell Westbrook. He even said in this post-game interview, basically what I had been telling people, um, because if y'all remember the, the first time we talked about the Washington Wizards earlier this season, I was like, Russell Westbrook doesn't look like Russell Westbrook. And a lot of people want to say it was him being washed and things like that, but he just wasn't attacking the paint. I even looked at the stats on my podcast, where, like he was shooting at the paint 25% of his shots there. Last year, the year before that, it was all around 50%. When we saw him be dominant in the last season, the last couple months before covid Ooh, I can't say that word. Shut the league down. He was dominated because it opened up the floor and allowed him to attack, attack, attack. And this season, he wasn't attacking. And he said in his post-game interview that he was playing on an injury. Basically, <laughs> exactly what I was telling people. He was playing with an injury. He said he was basically playing on one leg. Which begs the question, like, just why not get healthy? Because in those games <laughs> where he's playing on one leg, you, you admire the heart. He wasn't helping the team. And look, he's helping the team now. They get a win and a big one, man. Um, a lot of people talking about Bradley Beal's like body language in the first half, and I saw it too. Um, but in the second half, he took over. I mean, we talk about what twenty something points in the second half, and ultimately it led him hitting that big shot from like the logo, them getting the steal, then Russell Westbrook hitting the three. And you know what? I'm so happy Russell Westbrook hit that three because the possession before when they needed a three, he tried to do a step back on Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's like seven feet tall, and I'm like, no, Russ. But it all and it was the same spot where he actually hit the shot. Um, it's good to see Russell Westbrook playing like the Russell Westbrook you and me know because I was afraid. I, was, I, w- I would say I was a little bit afraid of maybe the, the way people were talking about him, him being washed, was maybe coming to a reality. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, um, everybody loses that battle with time. All of our favorite players in the league will eventually start to look like not our favorite players. They're going to start to look worse. And hopefully this is the turn in the right direction for Russell Westbrook because I'm not ready to give up on Russ, man. His intensity is there. Like, man, the fact that he got him and Bruce Brown got teed up for him basically just telling Bruce Brown, you too small. Russell Westbrook always finds a guy to either just, just talk trash to all day, and today was the Bruce Brown game. So it's a, it's a good team win because it was Russell's 40, um, Bradley Beal's 30. Then they got good contributions from Mo Wagner. Is Smith played an amazing game. And as a team, they look, they look solid today. I mean, they were going against, like, the worst defense in the league. But, hey, if this is what they need, this is their fourth win on the season, and two of them have gone to come against this Brooklyn Nets team. And, well, you would think that if you get Joe Harris putting up 30, Kevin Durant puts up basically 40, Jeff Green gives you 23 off the bench, and Jeff Green's such a good signing, and then Kyrie's giving you 26, you, you expect to win, right? But, no, because they don't defend anything. And that's the biggest question mark that we always talk about with this team. No matter what, if James Harden is there, he don't change the, the dynamic defensively. So they got they got to figure that out. Jeff Green as a signing has been so good, though. Um, Jeff Green is a guy that NBA nerds always not make fun of, but talk about how when he switches teams, the team that he just left gets significantly better. And it's he's helping the team right now, offensively offensively but what a game what a game and the same time this game was happening the 76 was putting together a great fourth quarter comeback they ended the, if i'm not mistaken they ended their run at the end of the game on a 31 to 6 run to win against the indiana pacers insanity and what led to this they ran a zone matisse stiebel's wingspan of a pterodactyl showed up and ben simmons i got to get a lot of love to ben simmons basically a couple couple videos ago we were talking about ben simmons and his lack of aggression when when joel and b isn't there and today he played that man he ended up with seven assists but i promise you he could have had 15 it felt like because he was finding open shooters seth curry didn't hit didn't hit his shots today um um danny green was 0 for 4 from three he Look like the all NBA player that you want him to look like when Joel Embiid is not there. If if they can end up grinding out some of these games with Joel Embiid is resting or doing whatever, this is a scary, scary team, man. And that zone was ridiculous. Four con Cork Moss. Fourth quarter, four fourth quarter, four con. Killing the game. Um, that's a mouthful to say. So you had <laughs> listen to this lineup. You had Ben Simmons, Matisse Steibel, and Dwight Howard 
on the court together, and they went on a positive run. Offensively, it didn't look bad because Furkan Korkmaz in the shots, but you had a lot of steals from Ben Simmons, who was basically playing like the safety role in that in that zone and all over the place. Um, TJ McConnell looked like he had never played basketball before. He looked like me going against the 76ers. He was like wide-eyed and scared of the zone. Matisse Stibe was playing it incredibly. Um, this is a very bad loss for the Indiana Pacers, obviously. No Joel Embiid. And just to blow that type of lead. It was so surprising to me that TJ McConnell was still in the game and not Aaron Holiday because Aaron Holiday was one of the reasons they were up by 20 in the first place. Especially when TJ McConnell was doing what he was doing. He ended with six turnovers in 20 minutes, 25 minutes. That's terrible. That's terrible. So you have him looking like looking scary out there. Um, I would expect Coach Nate Borkren to call a timeout or something throughout this run. He didn't really do that. They take an L, a bad L. But Philly... That's that's an amazing win, man. It's a game where I stopped paying attention to because they were down by 20. And then the other game, the Washington Wizards and the Brooklyn Nets were looking so good. I focused in on that one. Then I look over. I'm like, oh, snap, it's a 10-point game. Then I look over. Oh, snap, it's a six-point game. And now I got to really pay a lot of attention to it. So, Forcon, ben, ben Simmons, uh, Tobias Harris, I ain't even said his name. My apologies. was amazing today. Great team win for them. Jokic. Before those other two games were known, this video is going to be primarily about Jokic and his MVP MVP candidacy. Today he had a career night against the two-time Defensive Player of the Year, which is so crazy. Think about this: this man, Nikola Jokic, is such a such a matchup nightmare that the two-time Defensive Player of the Year that plays the same position as him didn't even start off guarding him. He's such a matchup nightmare that Quinn Snyder was like, we're going to put Bogdanovich on him because I think that's that's our best guess. That's our best way of trying to guard Jokic. Well, it wasn't. Eventually, that whole scheme that, that Snyder was trying to play got reverted and then um, then, then Rudy Gobert got on him. But at that point, it didn't even matter who was guarding him. Jokic, is, is he the most fun player in the league to watch right now? Probably. And I remember a video I, I filmed three years ago. I was in my old apartment, and there was a game where, or I mean, maybe two years ago, it was a game where Nikola Jokic attempted one shot, and I was on his ass in that video. I'm like, bro, you are too talented to not be aggressive. And this year, maybe it's because he came into the to the season in shape. He is extremely aggressive. I think in that video, I said something along the lines of, "It is selfish for you to not be selfish when you're that talented." That's kind of a bar. That's kind of a bar. It is selfish to your team for you to shoot one shot. And, man, that man cannot miss today, it felt like. Um, um, Campazzo was super fun. He threw some dimes out there. Overall, they shot amazing as a team. Jokic was literally unstoppable no matter who they threw at him. And, again, the two-time defensive player of the year didn't stand a chance against Jokic. And it's so funny to think that, like, when, when the Warriors were going in their run, we're talking, like, 2015, it was a real conversation, like, in the NBA world about the death of the center position, right? Draymond Green is playing this five, and every team is trying to mimic Draymond Green playing the five and trying to go ultra small ball. There, there were good centers in the league, but nobody was, like, super ahead of the pack. And if you ask me right now, the top two MVP candidates are both centers. It is an amazing turnaround in just a couple seasons. I mean, you still got players like Carl Anthony Towns who are so dynamic. And, I mean, even though Rigo Bear got dominated today, he's still one of the top bigs in the league. So it is so crazy to see just in a small period of time how the narrative around a position or, or something like that can 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 change. Um, Jokic, ridiculous, ridiculous. And for the Utah Jazz, I mean, Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell didn't score. They didn't They didn't play well. And that was ultimately it. And when you throw that on top of Jokic putting up 47, you're just not going to win. And they snapped their streak. And now that allows the Clippers to be the best team in basketball record-wise. I know y'all like that transition. They had the first game of the day um, against the New York Knicks, and they played very well. If you don't know this, the New York Knicks are one of the best defensive teams in the league, um, and the, the Clippers took care of them. And what, what did it was, like, in the third quarter, they start to run the zone because as good of a defensive team the Knicks are offensively, they don't shoot the three ball. They're, the, they're last in three-point attempts, and they're last in three-point makes. So I'm guessing Ty Lue was like, oh, yeah, that's a scouting report I forgot about. Let's run a zone and allow them to shoot. Don't let R.J. Barrett get ahead a of steam and get to the basket. Don't let Julius Randle get ahead of steam and get to the basket. And Patrick Patterson, bro, Patrick Patterson had this game, and it reminded me of one of his playoff series when he was a part of the Toronto Raptors. And now that I'm saying that, I remember that him and Lou Will played together for a couple seasons in Toronto. But one of the games against Brooklyn, he had a game where he was like six for six. He didn't miss a single shot. Now, I don't think they won that game, but Patrick Patterson, P-Pat or Pat-Pat, um, is like a guy that he's like, whatever you need, coach, I can do that. 
I'm going to do it solidly. Five for five from the field, three for three from three. He was just ready to play. Razzy Jacks has continued to surprise me as, as the guy at the point guard position, especially with Patrick Beverly being out for some time. He's been really good. Um, I'm still a little concerned about that Luke Kennard contract. But, hey, hey, early in the season, you never really know. And they got some good contributions from the bench, even with Lou Will still not looking extremely like Lou Will. But they got some other guys out there like Mook um, playing really solidly, which is really cool. Um, the Knicks still have Quickly, and, and Quickly is in that realm of floater spot. Just get him two points. He don't even need to shoot it no more. Did he come into the league with the best floater as a rookie? I don't really know, but he's got it. He's up in their conversations for sure. And then the last game of the day, um, I just watched the Timberwolves finish out a game against the Cavaliers where Ant-Man had another really good one. This is a good this is a good promising thing. The last couple games for Ant-Man have been really good. Um, and they have some personalities on their team, man. What's crazy is like two weeks ago, I was just having a conversation with a subscriber, and I do this like – I'm in this competition. I don't want to do any promotion, but I do this competition where it's like sports card investing. Um, they gave us like $100 in our account. We got to buy cards, sell cards, yada, yada, yada. And a, and a, a friend or fr a fan of the channel was like, Kenny, buy Jalen Noel stock right now. I was like, uh, it's like 30 cents. Sure, I buy bulk of them. And then Jalen Noel had a big game, and I'm, I'm looking forward to selling those cards. So it's, they got some personalities on this team, man. And I said that like the fact that Minnesota is in Minnesota and in the fact that they are a small market team and they're bad is preventing the world from really seeing Anthony Edwards because, like, every interview I've seen of him, amazing, super hilarious. He should be a guy that's, like, when we talk about this draft class as rookie season, that should be getting a lot of a lot of praise and a lot of hype. And he kind of don't. You know, you see the Lamellos, you see, you see James Wiseman getting posted a lot because he plays for the Warriors, but not a lot of love to Anthony Edwards, who was the number one pick. And this is one of – this is probably – undoubtedly his best game of the season, which is really cool for them. Um, and they played defense tonight against one of the better defensive teams. So really good games, really good games across the board here. And I'm super excited to see back to a Russell Westbrook playing at this level because this is what we what we like to see. Is this going to convince Bradley Beal that he wants to stay? Oh, first of all, that's us, by the way. That's us that's trying, that's telling Bradley Beal to get out. And Bradley Beal has never even expressed that he wanted to go anywhere. But that's us trying to get him out of a situation that we don't look to be we don't see it as good for him, but maybe it's great for him and his family. I have no idea. And his wife is on Twitter um, arguing with Worldwide Wob, you know, just backing up her guy, which I can admire that. You know, I hope that my future wife is backing me up on social media eventually. That's all I got.